And this video is going to be about the smallest towns in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, and that is that means the smallest incorporated town. So nothing that's unincorporated or census designated places or things like that, but actual towns that are still incorporated, the smallest ones in Oklahoma. Stidham, Oklahoma is the largest town on our tour with 17 uh, for the population. Um, it, as you drive around and walk around, it's very uh, busy area. Um, there's not a lot of old abandoned buildings. Um, I, I think it's probably because they're not, it's not too far from Lake Eufaula, which is a popular place to, for recreational activities, so only about three miles from there. But the town is, has gotten smaller. Um, it used to have, you know, a little bit over 100 people. Uh, it kind of stayed between 50 to 100 people for a long time. And then in the last 20 to 30 years, it's certainly gotten smaller. A uh, very beautiful area of Oklahoma for sure. So it's a, it's a, very, it's a very nice drive into town and um, kind of a cool place to check out. I'm here in Renfro, Oklahoma. I'm here at the, the Renfro Station abandoned building. I think it was a bar. It says, uh, drink it or wear it. That's what the slogan says. Um, I don't know too much about Renfro, it, except for it had a couple hundred people um, in the early 1900s and got down all the way to 12 in 2010. And in the last census in 2020, it's up to 15. As you walk around um, town, there, there are some abandoned buildings. There's not a lot, um, but there's a few. Uh, but there's a, lot, there's a lot of busyness. There's um, a big grain elevator right here. Um, it's actually several. And, and uh, so there's a lot of uh, people working around here. There's just not very many people living here. Couldn't find a lot out about this town online, um, and it has it has gotten smaller quickly. Um, it was almost at 40 at the last census, and has gone all the way to 14 in 2020. Um, interesting though, as you drive around and explore, there's some old buildings. There's a interesting little old convenience store downtown, and then um, there's a there's a 
old abandoned church, which appears to be a uh, old school, I think, um, that became a church because there's a school behind me that is now abandoned that says it was built in 1950 on the side. So maybe that was the original school converted into a church. And then this was the school that was built later that looks like it is maybe, I don't know if there was tornado damage or uh, some sort of damage hit the school. But not much going on in Meridian. It's a few miles from any kind of a main road. So not too much traffic, except there was one car there. It's about the only car I've seen the whole time I've been in Meridian. miles from paved roads. It's dirt roads to get here. Uh, the little town, I guess you call it a town, it's a town, it's officially a town, um, does have paved road in the, in the middle, but everything else is dirt roads to get here. Years ago when they had a post office here, there people would come from many miles away to get their Valentine's Day cards stamped with the Loveland postmark. And uh, so that, that was kind of made Loveland a popular place at one time. There's no post office left. Um, there's this old water tower right behind me that's pretty interesting. And uh, other than that, it's hard to believe there's 13 people here. standing inside what I think was a school here in Jefferson, Oklahoma. Uh, I think I drove every road and I saw one person and uh, the, the population is officially nine. Um, there are some newer houses and, um, and there's, a, there's an old church, uh, but other than that and this school and, and a grain elevator, there's really not much here um, and there's not much activity.
Knowles, Oklahoma was originally named Sands City when it was incorporated in, in the early 1900s. Um, and, and, then as, and then it moved just slightly a little bit to the east to kind of line up with the railroad that was coming through here. And when they did that, around that time, they changed the name to Knowles. And it grew and had uh, 250 to 300 people here. And, and then the 1930s hit. In the 1930s, the depression hit hard, hit the farmers here hard. And then the Dust Bowl, just after that, uh, came and really uh, took its toll on this area. It got smaller and smaller, and, um, it, and it has gone all the way down to six in the latest census here in 2020. And so there's a, a grain elevator that is on the National Register of Historic Places there behind me. Um, and, and there's some abandoned buildings, but some abandoned buildings and a couple newer houses. It, it feels like there's more than six people that live here. Lotsey, Oklahoma um, is not really a town. It's just a ranch of 2,000 acres, which is right behind me. And it's a cattle and pecan ranch. And so I'm not sure why they incorporated it, maybe to bring some more business to their, their pecan sales, which is open a, a couple hours a week, as the sign says. Um, it used to be the smallest town in Oklahoma because um, there were only two people at one time. And uh, the latest census has them at six. Um, at the, I think the highest it's been is 15 or 16 or something like that. Um, so the farmer, uh, his daughter was named Lotsey, and so that's how they got the name of this town. So this is named after the farmer's daughter. in the very small town of Lambert, Oklahoma, um, has, a, has a typical history and uh, a part that's actually very kind of fascinating. Um, the typical is, is a railroad town, uh, was never very big, had, had businesses and things like that, and supported the town and had a hundred and some people. But the interesting thing is, right down this road, about a half a mile, is an unincorporated community called Ewood. It used to be a town, and I guess you'd call it a ghost town now, uh, much like Lambert, although Lambert is still incorporated, Ewood is not. And, uh, but, but Lambert survived a little more than Ewood. And the interesting thing is that there was a railroad that was going north and south, and another railroad that was going east and west, and they met in this area. And so Lambert set up shop on one that was going north and south, and Ewood picked the east and west, and I guess the north and south one was more successful, and and um, Lambert was able to sustain their population and, um, and, and just success a little bit longer than, than you would. But you would is literally, I can see it from here. Towns like this, what happens is not very many people are gonna move into the town and people are gonna pass away over time and the population is gonna get smaller and smaller. It is absolutely gorgeous in this part of Oklahoma.
It's hard to imagine that a town can have only three people, but that's what Cooperton, Oklahoma actually has. So it wasn't always that way. Um, Cooperton had as many as a couple hundred people at one time over a hundred years ago and uh, the railroad did not come through here and so that hurt, hurt the population and it uh, declined over time. And then in the new census that just came out this year, uh, it says there's only three people and you think, man, how can there only be three? And when you drive around this town, all you see is abandoned homes. And I can see one home that probably has three people that live there and uh, it's a nice home. And, and, and um, But then you have this old school you have a sign that says dances on Friday night. Um, it's, it's strange. So if you drive down the road to where the map says Hoot Owl, Oklahoma, you'll eventually get to a uh, no trespassing gate that um, has, a, has a mobile home park. And so I drove up to it. Uh, I found a mailbox that says Hoot Owl, Oklahoma on it. So obviously I know I'm in the right place, but there are people that live right here on the edge, I guess, of what you would call Hoot Owl. So how does a town have a population of zero? I tried to find this out online. I called the Oklahoma Department of Commerce. They didn't know. And uh, so I thought, well, I need to come out here to hoot out Oklahoma and try to figure it out myself. Um, so this town was incorporated in the late 1970s by a family of three, and they did that to keep people off of their property. The bank around here uh, was going to foreclose on the property and so the family was going to um, dissolve the town and so they had a, an official vote and obviously the family voted to dissolve the town but for some reason the bank decided not to dissolve the town so they challenged it in court and the Mays County District Court ruled in favor of the bank and so it kept Hoot Owl technically as a town, even though uh, the family was going to sell the property and move away. Someone else bought the property. Um, to They wanted to use the property maybe someday as a retirement place or a weekend retreat for their family or something like that. Um, and then that's about all you could find anywhere online. So as I was walking around exploring, trying to figure this out, a car pulled up and rolled their window down and asked me kind of what I was doing and I explained and they told me the story and so this trailer park is considered um, in Salina which is the nearest town to here and beyond this trailer park through private property still now is the town of Hudao of which there used to be a house but now there's there's nothing I guess that um, you know decomposed and they had to end up tearing down the house. But the people that own the property live in this little grouping of mobile homes and plan to build a house where the original house was in Hudao and maintain it as a town. So um, as, as the population is zero in 2020, at some point, this couple plans to 
build a house and the population will, I guess, go up to two. Don't know when that'll happen, but technically, Hudal still has zero people. As of 2020, is tied for at least the smallest town in the world. It can't get any smaller than zero. I thought about getting the drone and trying to get an aerial uh, view of, of Hudao, um, but the lady I talked to said there was nothing there, and I thought, well, maybe it's best that Hudao remains a mystery until uh, the owners uh, want to open it, I guess, open it up for others to see. So, uh, but a fascinating, fascinating uh, footnote, footnote in the smallest towns in Oklahoma, and a fitting place to end. When I did the video on Kansas, I really enjoyed it and it made me think about other states and Oklahoma's small towns are, are even smaller than the ones in Kansas and makes me want to do go to other states and visit the other small towns. I was fascinated by how these towns exist and, and each one of them has a unique story from, from towns that have just gotten smaller through the years to something like Hudal, which is a totally unique story and situation of a town that still exists even though there's no one living there currently. Oklahoma, you're a really interesting and fascinating state. Really glad that I was able to explore it on this video.